You're listening to the What the Wrestling Podcast, the show that brings you all things wrestling with your host, RJD. Dom Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> oh, shit. We still battling a goddamn cold. But we don't care. It's a new year. Happy New Year. 2022 is here. The champ is here. What is going on? Happy New Year. Hope everybody enjoyed their night. Hope everybody didn't drink and drive and everybody made it home. Don't be stupid. Be stupid. I mean, it's too little too late for that. But hopefully everybody had a great night. Happy New Year. Happy 2022, everybody. Different year. Possibilities are endless. Let's make this year better than last year. If you made a million dollars last year, let's make two million this year. If you made one dollar last year, let's make two hundred dollars this year. Let's improve. If you were not healthy last year, let's get healthy this year. Let's make some moves to be better than the year before. Not really a lot of excuses to go around. Let's just be better. Let's just do better. Shout out to the Misfits. Shout out to the Misfits. Go watch Misfit TV if you're a gamer. My boy Mike is on fire right now in that community. That community is red hot. The Discord is hot. Misfit TV, the channel is hot. So shout out to him. Real talk. Big things coming in 2022 for the Misfits. Big things coming for RJD TV. But we are here to talk about Rampage and other news. We'll leave the gaming for another day. But check out my socials because they have not changed, baby. So, follow me, RJD. RJD10K on Instagram. RJ699 on Twitter. RJD199 on Snapchat. Most importantly, excuse the voice but we are in the new year and we are not going to let a little cold stop us from bringing you this fire content you heard me do it just do it follow what the wrestling on facebook and youtube and tiktok follow me on anchor at what the wrestling follow me on spotify at what the wrestling Season two, bitches. Surprise, motherfucker. I still have a cold. That's not a surprise, though. Listen, it's not the Rona. I'm thankful. It's not the Rona. I drank my coffee. I got my tea. And we're going to talk about AEW. And we got a lot of AEW news today. Uh, yes, there was some confirmations between Mr. Guevara and Tai Kante, but we ain't going to get into all the personal shit, but I do have one thing to say about that. And we are going to get into the whole swole, swole, swole and Tony Khan situation. Uh, I am going to tell you 
how uh, Mr. TK made a boo-boo, in my opinion. Uh, love TK, love AEW, but we're going to call out the good. We're going to call out the bad. And uh, this was a PR nightmare. Definitely went about it the wrong way. But let's get into it. As always, let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Tis I, RJD here. Welcome to What the Wrestling. Perfect. I am your host, RJD. Yes, I got all the windows open. It's chilly in the house. I got my sunglasses on. My eyes still hurt, but it's all good. I'm still a sexy beast, bald and sexy baby. Sexual chocolate, sexual chocolate, uh, coming in, coming in live from the corner office with the monster view, with the cat right here. The, the, trust me, he's here. For all you animal activists out there, the cat is here. He's nice and safe. I don't want to bother him though. He's taking a nap. Always taking a nap in my goddamn spot. I wonder if I like put my glasses this way. Can you see him through the reflection? Can you see him right there? I wonder. Can you see him? I don't know. Whatever. Oh, I got my big ass cup of iced tea. Oh, well, tea, not iced tea. Got some lemon in there. I should have kept the lemon in. Man, I needed that. We're going to get through this today. Listen, everybody, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. What the wrestling. You already have the socials. I will put them back up at the end of the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. It costs you nothing. It's a new year. We are trying to get, not trying, fuck that. We're not using that language. We are going to get to thousands and thousands of subscribers. I got a very hefty goal, 10,000 by the end of June. 10,000 by the end of June. But in order to get there, we need some momentum, people. So in order for me to get to 10,000 subs, I want everybody to go out there and like, comment, share, and subscribe to this video. If you're listening to it on Spotify, like, comment, share. Uh, I put up polls every time I post a video. So every time the video goes up, the poll will go up. Answer the poll. Let's interact. Let's talk. Drop me a comment. I will comment back. I promise you I will. Let's do it. 2022. We are going to be here a lot. It's 365 days in a year. We got about 364 more to go. So let's get it going. Day one tonight at 8 o'clock. There will be a review on that tomorrow. Catch me live. Live 95. We will be going back live 95. And we will be going back to do watch-alongs for AEW Dynamite. So get used to that as well. A lot of things coming this year. We got some merch some more merch we got some more merch coming out some t-shirts some hats i got a lot of things in the works a lot of things that i am secretly working on to make the channel as good as it can be to keep you guys informed and entertained that's what we're doing so without further ado i cannot breathe <laughs> my nose my nose is like actively rejecting air right now <laughs> it's like weird Whew, it's weird as fuck but without further ado, let's get into this. Uh, Mr. TK, we're going to need you to step to the front of the line. We're going to need you to step to the front of the line and we're going to need you to take We're going to need you to take this verbal lashing that you are about to receive. Now, listen. I love AE Dub. I love TK, I love the Bucks, Cody, Kenny. Everything those brothers sacrificed. Everything those brothers did to bring us AEW, the people that they had to the call, all in had to be successful in order for AEW to even exist. So they put their own funds together with the help of, I believe, Ring of Honor for All In. Uh, I actually got, went back and rewatched All In. If you haven't rewatched All In, go rewatch it. You could probably rewatch it on YouTube like I did. Uh, if not all of the matches, most of them are on YouTube. Um, go back and rewatch All In, man. It was special to see where they were like the MJFs and the Brit Bakers, where they were back then to where they are now. It's like a wow. Like you just see the progression from four or three, four years ago. But 
I love what they've done for this company, and I love everything about AEW. Listen, AEW is not perfect. It has flaws. But what I will say is you got to call out the good with the bad, baby. And, yeah, there was some bad to go around here. Um, excuse me. Shit. Oh, my goodness. I'm, like, struggling. Struggling to breathe right now. But... AEW fucked, uh, Tony Khan fucked up. Uh, surprise, motherfucker. I know, I'm surprised too. I, I wouldn't expect that from him. But he got a little defensive, he got a little emotional. And here's the problem. So, Big Swole was, excuse me. Excuse me, y'all, I am still battling the cold and gonna fight through it. Big Swole was once a part of AEW, uh, part of the women's division. And she basically, um, she basically did not want to come back to AEW and AEW did not want her to come back. So there was a mutual decision to split amicably. No hard feelings on one side or the other. That's awesome. But Big Swall had some comments about Tony Khan and AEW. Not Tony Khan personally, but uh, AEW. One of her comments was about the lack of diversity. And another one of her comments was about, you know, lack of structure. You know, there's problems in AEW, she says. Now, I'm going to read what she said, and then we'll, we'll keep it going with what Tony Khan said, and I'll tell you where TK fucked up. So, and I quote, because there was a uh, article that she had, <coughs> excuse me, there was an article that she had and during this article, this is some of the things that uh, she said. Outside the, uh, and I quote, outside lack of structure, the biggest issue, which is diversity. Uh, I do not beat around the bush when it comes to diversity and my we people. We needed a new home in what a dry in the climate. the blue hell is that? And with Realtor.com's draw on map feature, no, we found shot. this one. Hey, neighbors, we're having a pool party. Join us. What Again, Larry, we'll die if we go in the pool. Where's that coming from? I'm so sorry about that. I'm like, where's that coming from? So I had a fucking ad pop up. <laughs> I had an ad pop up on my damn. That's unfortunate. So now I gotta go find the damn article again. Apologize for that. We, uh, we're not going to sit here and complain. I'm just going to pull the article back up. That's all. But, yeah, that sucks. So, during her interview, okay, so, let's keep it going. Because there's a lot to unpack here. I guess I'll read the entire, I'll read it in its entirety. So, and I quote, I explained to TK that I didn't want to resign because my peace was being disturbed. If anybody knows me or knows myself, if anything is disturbing your peace, it's time to let it go. I might be scared or be hard, but it's time to let it go. When Kenny said that, it was uh, it was the circle coming to an end because Kenny and I would bump heads sometimes through my a through my time in AEW. To end it on that note felt good. It felt wonderful to end it at a place where we didn't see eye to eye, but we were there, she said. So first things first, I didn't know her and Kenny uh, butted heads, but Kenny did big her up and say, listen, I'm glad that you spoke up and that we, I, you know, I'm glad that you spoke up because other people were able to speak up and they got the courage to speak up because you spoke up. So you know what? Kudos 
to them for making it work. And the thing with Kenny is he used to help out uh, the women's division. He, uh, he probably still does. Uh, you know, the Joshi wrestlers. He was a part of a lot of the Japanese women coming in. He was a real big uh, factor in the women's division and how it was shaped, or especially early on. Thanks to Realtor.com's home so, alerts, we found... So that actually was great to see. So they continued. So she continued. And I quote, My heart just stopped being in it as the reason why I left AEW. I felt like there were a lot of things, and I told them in my exit interview, there were a lot of things that needed to change. I know fans of the company don't take criticism well. Stop right there. You no, know they do not. AEW fans that strictly like AEW do not take criticism well. They think AEW can do no wrong. They think AEW is perfect. I love AEW, but AEW is not perfect. I love WWE, and we all know they are far from perfect. We all know that. So I, uh, especially now, I try to look at this highly, highly objectively and very neutral. I try to keep it neutral because... I don't want, I don't want to be swayed one way or the other. You got to call out the good with the bad, the bad with the ugly. You got to call it all out. But she is absolutely right when she said that. Let me continue. Uh, some, uh, I know if a lot of fans of the company don't take criticism well, sometimes certain ones. Know this. This is somebody from the inside. The structure is a little off. It's fine to be loose, but I like to have a little bit more structure. I feel like women shouldn't have gone through everything they went through just to get on TV or get time. You sign, you, you're signed to this big company, you should get time. All these men are getting time, but the women weren't getting anything or you're not putting people on TV because more people are coming in. Let me stop it right there. Stop. Uh, no, don't get some help. Respect her authority. She's right. What was one of the biggest complaints about AEW till this day? They don't put on a lot of women matches. People say that every single week. They put on the one token women match. They have the one Britt Baker interview. DMD. Shout out to her. And then that's all you get as for women. So she, she has legitimacy there. She does have legitimacy there. Let's continue. There are more people coming in, but you don't have enough product for all of these people. Now you have all of these people sitting around having two or three minute matches on dark. Doesn't keep me happy. Shoveling more money doesn't keep a person happy. We've seen time and time again, especially in a place where there's not enough space. There's no writers in a sense. Not everyone is comfortable writing their own things. Closed mouths don't get fed. That's exactly what that environment is. If you are shy and you don't know how to write or not creative, it's not going to work unless they want it to work for you. This is one of the biggest issues she said. Now, let's stop the show right there. I'm going to be honest. She got a point. Respect my authority. She's got a point. You cannot sit there you can't sit there and say anything that she said here was disrespectful because it wasn't. This didn't come off and there's a little bit more that I'm going to get to, but I want to get, I want to hit every point as I'm going through it. There's nothing she said here that was disrespectful. There's nothing she said here that was out of the realm of it was so far fetched what she said. She is just a disgruntled employee, a former employee. No. She's got legitimate gripes here. This is a legitimate problem in AEW. And you know what? AEW is a loose, is very much opposite WWE, where WWE, they're handing you shit. You have, um, they're handing you something to read. They're handing you a script, and you have to abide by the script, and you can't deviate from it, and you got to memorize it in two hours because we go live at eight. AEW is like, listen, talk about bullet point a bullet point b how you get there is all on you go be somebody and it's up to you to think creatively 
to get your point across while still hitting the two bullet points. Honestly, uh, a lot of people thrive on that, but there are some people who don't thrive on that. Not everybody is creative. Not everybody can talk. Not everybody's comfortable doing promos. Jungle Boy is one of their biggest goddamn stars, and he is still not comfortable doing promos. Dante Martin, one of the best. The with the Beth, you hear me? One of the Beth, one of the Beth. I'm Mike Tyson. <laughs> Shout out to Mike. Now, one of the best athletes, pure athletes that they have in AE Dub. His promo skills aren't good. So he's right. Uh, she's got a point. Not everybody's comfortable doing promos. But like she said, if you if they're gonna make it work, they're gonna make it work. It don't matter. Now we get into some of the other stuff. Outside of lack of, now she continues, outside of lack of structure, their biggest issue, which is diversity. I do not beat around the bush when it comes to diversity. And this is what I was reading before, before that damn ad came out of nowhere. I do not beat around the bush when it comes to diversity and my people. There is no representation, truly. And, and when there is, it does not come across in the black community as genuine at all. I do not know why everybody is so afraid to accept it or say it, but it's not a good look. Okay. What happens is you have all of this one you have this wonderful com company that treats people like family, but there is nobody that looks like me that is represented at the top and in the room with them. They are not helping to necessarily influence decisions. But to explain why certain slang and certain words shouldn't be said, there is no one else who can explain our culture or experience except for us, she said. Now, um, let me, because uh, let, this continues. Let me say this last part. I knew something was up when my daughter, who loves watching wrestling, she would watch AEW all the time and seldomly watch WWE. She's not a big fan unless... Her uh, dad, Cedric Alexander, which is her father, he works for WWE in case you didn't know, was on TV, which stopped happening after they botched the Hurt Business. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. Are you dumb, stupid, or dumb, huh? Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Yes, they did botch the Hurt Business. God damn. Kudos to that. <laughs> Kudos to that little girl. Mommy, there is nobody that looks like me on AEW, but there's nobody that looks like Daddy. Then she started watching WWE because she saw Bianca Belair and Big E. She saw herself represented. If that wasn't a click, you are absolutely right. I don't have an explanation. It's 2021. Why are people saying it'll take three years for an AEW to have a black champ? This is a scripted sport. It should not take that long. If you have been wa watching WWE for 50 plus years, and you know what not to do, she said. Now, a lot to unpack here. When it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to the diversity argument with Big Swole, uh, Big Swole, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> you are very, very wrong, and I'm going to tell you why. Stop the cap. There's a shitload of diversity in AEW. Okay. Now, this is what I'm going to say. There's a shitload of diversity in AEW. And now, if you want to say not diversity, if you want to take out diversity and put out black world champion, I'm with you. I get it. There is no black world champion. But you can't say diversity. Because there's a shitload of diversity on AEW. But they don't have a black champion, a black world champ. She should have stuck with that. Because that actually makes sense. To me, that's a legitimate argument. Um, AEW doesn't have a black world champ. There's nobody in the... There's nobody black in the upper card right now. Right now, the upper, uh, uh, the upper card was Kenny. And then it went to Hangman. And that was Daniel Bryan probably going to go to MJF or, or Punk. Um, so I get that. There's no black world champ. Like WWE has a black world champ. They had two black world champs last year. They had Big E 
and they had Bobby Lashley. So they are definitely representing black people on WWE right now as, as world champion. You know, so she has a point with that. But she to say that there's a lack of diversity, eh. Stop the cow. Can't go, I can't go there with your sister. Can't do it. Because um no. That's wrong. That's wrong. Uh we have and let's run it down. Let's run it down. You have Mexican world champions, tag team world champions right now. Uh, Santana and Ortiz early on especially were heavily pushed you have um, uh, the Joshis are crazy the Joshis the Japanese people crazy represented they're all over all over AEW um, I don't know about Indians I don't know if they have any Indians but I know they have uh, black and brown people represented all over. Scorpio Sky is uh, featured, especially Scorpio Sky was part of the faction that was the first tag team champions, SCU. So they have black people represented. Jade Cargill is probably going to be the TNT champion. Jade Cargill is a black woman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Jade Cargill is a black woman. She's probably she's at the finals of the TNT tournament. So not only are black women getting represented, they had black men represented too. Now, like I said, if you want to say there's no black world champ right now, and there hasn't been a black world champ in three years, okay. There hasn't been. I can give you that. I can give you that. But you can't say lack of diversity because AEW is mad diverse. Every week we see a, a bunch of different nationalities and ethnicities on TV every week so you can't say that about AEW about diversity that's cap that's cap now I want to talk about Mr. TK so that is what Big Swole said in her interview that is what he said that is what she said in her interview and you know what like I said, she didn't come off to me. And this is important. This is important. Because she didn't come off to me as a disgruntled employee. She came off to me as somebody who genuinely had uh, some issues that she wanted to bring to the light. And everything that she said in her interview, she had an exit interview, and I'm sure she voiced her opinion to Tony Khan at her exit interview. So it's not like she's saying this shit behind the company's back, which I respect. If you're going to say something, say it to their face. If you want to say something about somebody, say it to their face first before you start talking about it behind their back. So at least... You can say, listen, they everything I'm saying to you, I already said that. I already said to them. So, excuse me, I respect that tremendously. And I respect the fact that she was able to open open up. And like I said, to me, nothing she said was disrespectful. Now, one fucking thing she said was disrespectful. But TK, TK then took a tweet. He took that tweet because that whole tweet was from an article that uh, was it Ryan Satin? No, it wasn't Ryan Satin. It was an article that she did an interview for. So he took that and retweeted it and quote tweeted. And he quote tweeted this. <laughs> so Fightful, yeah, so Fightful Wrestling. Shout out to Fightful Select. Uh, she they put out a, they put out the tweet of the interview saying Big Big Swole explains how lack of diversity and structure led to her leaving AEW, and they had the link to the article right there, and so he quote tweeted that and tweeted this: the top two AEW execs are Brown, me and Mega, Jade, Bowens, Caster, Dante, Nyla, Isaiah, and Mark Quinn, all won on TV this month. The TBS title tournament has been very diverse. I let Swole's contract expire 
as I felt her wrestling wasn't good enough. Hashtag AEW Rampage Street Fight Tonight. Oh, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. No bueno, Mr. Khan. No bueno. No. That's what you just did, bro. Just shot yourself in the foot. Now, let me tell you why. Tony Khan has been in, you know, he's all about business. He's a business guy. He's a numbers guy. His father owns the Jaguars. His family is immensely wealthy. They are very, very intelligent and business savvy people. I am I guarantee you they know about good PR and bad PR. I, I guarantee you they know. But first things first, a lot of people saw that tweet and they were like, How dare you? Because he, ugh, that tweet is all types of wrong. And a lot of my PR people, a lot of my PR people know he fucked up. <laughs> shots fired! Shots fired! You did not need to take shots, TK. You did not need to take shots, brother. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I'm going to tell you. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. All he had to do. Okay, first things first. I'm a black dude. I can speak on this. Real talk. Tony Khan is right. Let me just say that. He's right. There's mad diversity and shout out to private party. Forgot I forgot all about them. They the shit, they beat the young bucks in the beginning of, in the in the tournament a couple of years ago. Remember that? Come on, man. Listen. We needed a new home. Oh my god, with these in ads. In a very dry climate. Sorry about the ads, y'all. I apologize. But Tony Khan is right there's mad diversity they got diversity all over the place they got people they have people from the lgbtq community they got people from in prominent positions that were in prominent positions they got people that are black in prominent positions they got people that are mexican and uh, black and brown mexican puerto rican in prominent positions or have been in prominent positions all over the TV, all of these people he just named, uh, I believe, I believe all of these people are black or brown. <laughs> They're Dante, Caster, Isaiah, Mark Quinn, Nyla, Jade, Bowens. Yeah. And he is um, of Middle Eastern descent, Tony Khan. So black and brown people, they've been represented this month. So he proved a good point. All he needed to do was stop right before his last sentence. His last sentence is why this has blown up the way it has. When somebody, first of all, like I said, Tony Khan right here came off extremely defensive, extremely defensive and emotional. He came off extremely defensive and emotional because he attacked her personally and publicly. Even if he felt that way, you don't, especially being the president, the head, the leader of the company, you don't go after somebody. You don't go after somebody publicly like that when they didn't go after you publicly. I didn't hear Big Swole say, yeah, Tony Khan, he's a terrible businessman and he does not know how to manage. He doesn't know how to run the numbers. He doesn't know how to, he doesn't know how to do this. He doesn't know how to do that. He sucks at business. He sucks at running AEW. I didn't hear her say none of that. What I heard her say is, listen, I love AEW. It's a great company, but they have a diversity problem. I think they need to be a little bit more diverse. And you know what? I think the women need more time and we weren't getting a lot of time 
I did butt heads with Kenny, but we ended up working it out. But these are some of the issues that I see in AEW, and I hope that they fix it going forward. That's a legit criticism. I don't know about the diversity bullshit, but the other stuff was legit. She critiqued the company. AEW is not above criticism. It's not. Respect my authority. AEW is not above criticism. Just like we criticize WWE, we can criticize AEW. We can do that. Just when they fuck up, they 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 can get criticized. Especially if it's legitimate. If there's validity to it. We can call it out. And that's what she did. She didn't attack him person. She didn't attack the person. She didn't even attack the company. She said, listen, I love the company. We just have different... We got, I got gripes, you know, I have grievances and I think they could work on some things. She not attacking Tony Khan, but Tony Khan made a conscious effort and a conscious decision to attack her personally, which is where he fucked up. That he didn't have to do. Stop it. Get some help. I don't care what nobody says. He didn't have to attack her personally. He made a good point. His point is very valid. Like there's all of the diversity stuff she was talking about and the lack of black people and all of that getting getting noticed. He just shut down her whole argument right there. The only argument she could have came back with what with was, but there's no black world champion though. That's her only other argument. But the lack of diversity, he killed it with that one tweet. He killed that whole argument. But then he had to go attack her. And all my people in PR know, because I got some people in PR. All my people in PR know, you don't go attacking people pro as the head of a company. You don't go attacking people personally. When they didn't attack you, per even if they do attack you personally, you could take the high road or you could go in the mud with them, but she didn't attack him. She just criticized the company, which she is well within her right to do. She worked in the company. She can criticize the company. <laughs> All those people that work for, for WWE, when they left WWE and they criticized this and they criticized that and they criticized this, they are within their right to do that because they work for the company. So they know how it is. So they can talk about their experience and what WWE needs to work on. Just like Swole, who worked in AEW for years, can leave and talk about what she thinks they need to work on. That's not disrespectful. So all these people saying that that's disrespectful. Sorry, y'all are wrong. Y'all are wrong. Nope. Sorry. It makes no sense. But TK and his infinite wisdom, he uh he decided to attack her character. Well, her performance. When he didn't have to. This would have been better if he didn't say shit. If he just stayed quiet, didn't say anything, that would have been better. This would not even be news. If TK didn't even respond to this this wouldn't even be news but if he did respond to it and just left out the part about her performance this still wouldn't be news this would have faded away faded away but he had to go attack her character and that's a big no-no that's a big no-no so now there's and now here's another problem which a lot of people, I don't see a lot of people talking about. Big Swole felt a certain type of way, right? Do you think she was the only one who felt that way? Because I guarantee you, she wasn't. As soon as he sent that tweet, he should have been like, no! Damn, why'd I send that? Should have deleted that shit immediately. Because I guarantee you, Swole is not the only one who felt that, who feels that way. 
because you're already seeing it on Twitter. You have superstars liking liking her tweet. You got superstars liking his tweet. So automatically, you start to see a divide going right down the middle of AW. Leo Rush, he was pissed. He sent out, uh, he put out a couple of tweets yesterday, and one of his last tweets just said one word: apologize. Then he added Tony Khan. Tony Khan is very accessible, which is one of the things I love about him because he's a freaking billionaire guy, but he's accessible to everybody who works for him, which is dope because if they have a grievance or they have something they want to talk about, they could just, they could get right at him. They could talk right to him, which is awesome. But the problem is now... And, and unless he cleans this up, he, he can clean this up. But unless he cleans this up, you're going to have a divide in that locker room. And you don't want a divide in the locker room. You don't want, because Swole wasn't the only one who felt like that. Lee Moriarty liked her tweet. He was just on TV. He shows a lot of promise. You think those are the only two people that think that, there are lack of, that, that there's a lack of diversity in AEW? Or that there's no black world champ. You think they're the only two? <clears throat> they're not. I promise you. And then I'm sure you got other guys who are like, man, we good. We good on this side. I'm riding with TK. And then you're going to have people like, nah, man, we should get more time. I'm riding with Swole. Now you have a divide in the locker room. And then that's when things start to spill over into real life. And then people start looking at people sideways. Like, I'll tell you, it it can be like something that just festers and starts to grow into something uncontrollable. Now, AEW is a really close-knit. It's not like WWE. Definitely not. The atmosphere is more family-orientated. It is more family-like. And I think that they can bounce back from this. And I also think that TK can can fix this and just say, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't have to. I apologize. I didn't have to attack. I didn't have to go after Swole like that. The fact is we, we are very diverse. And he can make his point, clear cut to the point, bang, knock it out. If he so chooses. Now, he doesn't have to apologize for shit because if he feels that way, if he legitimately feels that way, then why would he apologize for, for the way he really feels? He don't have to, but there's a way to do and respond to what she said, and there's a way not to do it. And he definitely responded the wrong way. <laughs> My man TK was like, Come get some. I want to smoke. <laughs> yeah. Fatality. My man tried to go for her jugular, but you didn't have to do that, TK. You didn't have to do that, my brother. So, that is my take on this whole Swole situation. I wish I wish Big Swole nothing but the best, and we all know I love AEW. But I'm telling you, telling you, I, I don't want to see AEW start off the year with some div divisive bullshit because TK didn't because TK didn't you know let that tweet stay in his head so because you've already got people furious about certain things and it's like come on man we gotta do it so now look at this we got Keith Lee. We got Keith Lee respond. Look at this shit. It's, and I didn't even see this until just now. Um, is this Keith Lee response? Oh man, I gotta read this. Cause I think somebody just responded. Jesse Vasquez, who's that? <laughs> I 
I don't know who this is. Uh, he doesn't have a blue check. But look, look, somebody already put something up. Uh, somebody on Twitter put something up. Let me see who this guy is. Uh, okay. So somebody put this, somebody, uh, uh, Velasquez, I think, Jesse Velasquez, I don't know who this guy is, but in response to Tony Khan's tweet, Scorpio Sky should have already been TNT champ. Ricky Stark should be TNT champ in 2022 as well. Santana and Ortiz, what in the actual fuck are you doing with them? Your top 10 guys in AEW are trash. Keith Lee is about to come in and then that's the end of the tweet. So... Rex, uh, Rex shop if, Rex shop if and when he signs, if he isn't pushed away, Cole, Black, Andrade, etc., have been upon their debuts. We have a problem. Hashtag diversity. Hashtag minorities. Hashtag power re- uh, pro wrestling. So you've already got, man. Uh, powerhouse Hobbs. I think he he sided the other way. You got so many, like, you got so many people now chiming in. Oh, look at this. Denise uh, Cicado, my honest thoughts, swole, had every right to speak the truth. Her experience, everyone does. As I said, TK, as a boss, has the right to feel about his employees' performances, what he feels. As I said, but what... But that should have never been said publicly to embarrass her. It was wrong. My point exactly. You could have kept that shit in your head. <laughs> you didn't have to go out and go crazy. So that's what I'm trying to say. That's my whole point. You've already got people chiming in on this. It's way bigger than it needed to be. That's my whole point. If he said nothing, this is not news. If he said one thing and left out the part about attacking her performance, this is not news, but now it's news. Great way to start off 2021. Nope. I was joking. Now, before I get into Rampage, I know I talked about this for a while, but listen, we're gonna we, we're gonna keep it rolling. My voice is holding up. We are gonna get into Rampage. Tranquilo, relax. I got you. Um, let's talk about Ty Conte and Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara. Shout out to Sammy. Ty, uh, Sammy Guevara and Ty Conte definitely just put up a picture kissing Happy New Year and confirming that they are now a couple. I am not getting into that shit. All I will say is this. Before, before, before they even made this official yesterday or this last night, or officially, unofficially announcing to the world that they're together. When he, when he, and when he made it public that him and his fiance broke up, Everybody was dragging. They dragging her. They dragging her. They was dragging Ty Conti through the mud. Sammy Guevara's vlog. She's always on there. She she was a regular on there all the time. It appeared that they were spending a lot of time together. Good for them. They're fucking adults. They could do what they want. I'm not going to go talking about other people's relationships. None of my fucking business. But... You know, they did make it public and he did make it public that they've been broken up and she left Twitter because they were dragging her fucking name through the mud. So good for her for leaving Twitter. Keep your mental health, girl. Keep your mental health. And now they made it public like fuck the haters. We are a couple. And what? And you know what? To them, I say congratulations. Uh, Actually, perfect. I say congratulations to them. And stay off of Twitter, especially for her, because she's going to, I'm sure they're going to come after her because people already kind of knew because they were spending so much time together. But now that it's official, they're definitely going to come after her. So just stay off of Twitter, Ty. Stay off of Twitter. Ty, 
Ty Conti, please just stay off of Twitter. Congratulations. All I would say is people who are so worried about Sammy Guevara's relationship and Ty Conti, leave them the fuck alone. They're adults. People break up and get together with other people all the time. Shit happens. We don't know the ins and outs of their relationship. <coughs> nor, <coughs> nor is it our business to know. We ain't them. Let them do them. Whatever makes them happy, let them do them. That's their private life. That's their private business. Let's all give them their fucking privacy and stay out of their shit. Please. God damn. People always want to know, ooh, who's he fucking? Who's he fucking? Ooh, shoot, who's he fucking? Man, leave them alone. You know, it's already they already give us so much in the public light. They made their relationship public, so we could talk about it from the outside looking in. But to go attack their character and attack them personally, that's dude, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. Let them let them go have fun, man. They're young, they're on TV, they're living life, they're living out their dreams. They got together. Good for them. Good for them. Stop trying to drag people. Stop trying to drag people through the mud because he, uh, because him and his fiance broke up and he got with Ty Conti. Who gives a shit? Like, let them do them. So shout out to Sammy and shout out to Ty. Congratulations to them on getting together. I wish you guys many, many years of happiness. Now, let's get into Dynamite. I mean, Rampage. AEW Rampage came from Daily's Place. New Year's Smash results. Here we go. Oh, I got a fucking burp, but it's not coming out. Darby Allen, Anthony Bowens started us off. Uh, we had uh, Grandpa Sting out there. And we had Max Caster out there. These two put on a good match. Solid match by two solid professional wrestlers. The end came when Bowens caught... Uh, Darby Allen in the corner and before they went to picture in picture he threw basically threw Darby Allen into the ring post and he took a hellacious bump which was crazy after picture in picture Bowens caught Allen in the corner for a splash but wasn't able to take advantage of the situation they hit uh they each had a fury of strikes against each other Caster tried to interfere but Sting prevented him from doing it uh, Bowens took control with the distraction, but Darby recovered. I think he hit him with a code red. He tried to uh, get involved. Sting was out there regulating. The ending was a coffin drop to Anthony Bowens, and that was all she wrote. Andrade El Idolo. Tranquilo. He then came out onto the stage, and while they were distracted, Bowens hit, uh, he attacked Sting, knocked him out cold with, uh, he knocked him out cold with the boombox and then they knocked Darby Allen out cold with the, the chain around the fist, knocked his head off, and that was all she wrote. So we got Andrade versus uh um I'm about to say Andrade versus MJF. We got Andrade versus Darby Allen coming up soon. I'm here for that. So Max Caster is good. Anthony Bowens is very good in the ring. Every time I see that brother in the ring, it, you know, he gets, it's like, damn, I didn't know he was this good. That's how deep and how good AEW is. And Max Caster is good in the ring too. Don't sleep on him. But shout out to Anthony Bowens. They keep putting him on TV because they keep, he keeps putting on good matches. So shout out to him. Then we had the funnest thing on the show by far. By far. We had the Bunny and Penelope Ford versus Ty J in a street fight. Holy shit. These ladies went out there and they said, we are going to tear the fucking house down tonight. <clears throat> and they did. They tore the fucking house down. Penelope Ford, to me, she was like the breakout star here. She was just vicious. Uh, P 
Penelope, all of these ladies have great performances. So let me stop the cap right there. All of these ladies, perfect, great performances. But Penelope Ford was just vicious in everything she did. The bunny had the bunny then bladed. Anna J bladed. Ty Conti bladed. Oh no, Anna J didn't blade. Ty Conti bladed. She was bleeding all over the place. This was good. Um, there's something to be said about four four very attractive women just beating the holy hell out of each other in a very violent match this was great this was great shit so the match opens up with uh, Penelope Ford and the bunny going out there Ty J comes out uh, <laughs> Anna J throws the uh, Anna, uh, Ty Conti throws the damn trash can right at uh, I think it was the bunny no, it was Penelope Ford. The bunny then punched the chair with the brass nuts early, and then she got whacked over the head with it. That was funny. Then Anna J stole the nunchucks from her and knocked her head off. That set off a, a, a chain of events. Penelope Ford then took control, set up a moonsault right onto Ty Conti, but... The table didn't break, and she hit Ty Conti right in the face with her knee. Surprise, motherfucker. Holy shit, that had to suck. <clears throat> Moments later, Penelope Ford went and grabbed a glass bottle and smashed it over Ty Conti's head. That had to suck. Uh, the bunny was busted wide open because of getting hit in the head with the brass knucks. So she was over there, half her face was covered in blood. Anna J then suplexed the bunny onto two chairs. That had to suck. Uh, then Anna J uh, put the bunny in a sleeper hole, tried to put the Queen Slayer on her, but she slammed Anna J into a ta uh, chair, uh, into a table that was set up in the corner. Uh, a very light slam, but it still looked good. At this point, the crowd is going crazy. Then. Uh, the bunny went and got some thumbtacks, so we knew that was coming. She got a bag of thumbtacks from under the ring. Anna J then reversed a move and then suplexed her onto the thumbtacks, which had to suck for real. Stop it. Get some help. Then, <laughs> both, both, both of them ended up, and then uh, Penelope Ford broke up that pin. And you know what I liked about this match? Like, nobody should be kicking out of that. Like, I know the men do it and they kick out of it, but nobody should be kicking out of a superplex onto thumbtacks. Especially when thumbtacks on your head, your back, your legs, your ass, everything. You're going to be plucking them shits out of you. Nobody should be kicking out of that. And nobody kicked out. Like, Penelope Ford broke up the pin, which is great. So Penelope Ford and Ty Conti fought on the apron until Ty Conti hit a gotch-style power driver and put her through a table which had to suck for real. Surprise, <laughs> motherfucker. Then, the Queen Slayer went and got a barbed wire, wrapped it around her arm, and put the Queen Slayer choke onto Anna J, ranged back with that barbed wire on her neck, and made her tap immediately. This was fun as hell. The bunny looked good. She, The bunny does a good job of looking like crazy and unhinged. But with the bunny half her face being bloody, she looked even more crazy. That was great. Penelope Ford looked vicious in this match. That was great. Ty Conti does everything with... I love watching Ty Conti wrestle. And I love watching her throw elbow strikes. Because all her elbow strikes look vicious as fuck. Like, she throws them so... She throws them... How do I... Uh say this she throws them with such force that you can tell she's <clears throat> she's fierce about throwing everything her kicks are fierce her throws are fierce her judo throws are fierce everything with the facial expressions that's why i say taikante is spicy because it's like everything she throws is just fierce so shout out to all four of these ladies very violent very dope match shout out to all of you the cat is looking at me weird
but he's going to sleep, so shout out to him. Then we had Cody versus Ethan Page for the TNT Championship. This was very good as well. Told a great story. Uh, the end came when All Ego uh, put a counter on the power slam to the top rope. And he power slammed Cody from the top. Cody came back with a Cody cutter for a near fall. Uh, he had hit him with two uh, crossroads because he had kicked out of a crossroads earlier in the match. He had hit him with two crossroads and then hit him with the Tiger Driver 98. And he got the win. This was a great match. Ethan Page is great. Very under... You know, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page are very underrated. And I think if they were baby faces, I think they would get more play. But because they're bad guys, like, they're not getting a lot of burn right now. And both of these guys are great in the ring, especially Scorpio Sky. Ethan Page is really good, too. So these guys, they're going to have to start using. The, it's like AEW has such a problem because they got so many great, fantastic people on the roster. But it's like. They got to make room for everybody. Everybody can't win every match. So people got to win and people got to lose. So I hope they start shuffling more people because Santana and Ortiz need to be WWE champions. You hear me? Sorry about that. You stupid. Santana and Ortiz need to be AEW champions after the Lucha Bros. I think that's the natural progression. That's the direction I would go. Those guys have been waiting long enough. LAX formally is great they're smooth they're fluid they're good on the mic those guys need a, a nice healthy long run with the titles after the lucha bros not yet not yet but after the lucha bros that's where the titles need to go that's what i would do that's what i would do and that's all i got for you guys today we got an hour into the new year let's go baby we ain't playing no games. <clears throat> uh, as my voice starts to crack. It's all good. Surprise, motherfucker. Happy New Year. It is a new year. Everything uh, coming to fruition. Consistency wins the day. We are going to be here and be there and do what we got to do. Thank you all you. Thank everybody for joining me. Thank everybody for, who hit me up. Seeing how I was doing, seeing if I was okay. People thought I had the Rona. I do not. Thank the Lord. But uh, I have been sick as a dog, as you can see. But we are going to power through, baby. Catch me, as always, on my socials. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. RJD here. This is What The Wrestling Day one tonight, catch on my day one review tomorrow. I am out. Everybody be safe. Peace.